to stand here before you because I think we would all agree that education is our framework for growing our community. If we are not educating our students, if they're not adequately prepared, if they are not prepared to lead the world, then they definitely cannot lead in the city. So I have a series of questions and um, I think we'll move from left to right and then on the second question we'll do the opposite. So it has been said that your first 90 days are your most critical days in office. I would like to know from you, what, are your, what is your agenda as to education during your first 90 days? What is our agenda in the first 90 days as it relates to education? Absolutely. Well, education is the biggest issue. We've got a situation in Montgomery where our school system has been taken over by the state. It's under intervention. We've got uh, financial and academic intervention. So it's a high pro priority to try to improve this, the school system. We're going to have meetings quickly. We're going to have meetings with the superintendent, board of education, other educators, perhaps state superintendent, state board of education. We're going to get together and try to resolve some of, and try to study issues. We're going to look at other cities that, want, that have improved education because ours is broken, so we need some outside input, and we're gonna just try to identify areas of improvement. Right off, I can tell you, I think there's an enormous amount of bureaucracy. We're gonna try to reduce the bureaucracy and move that money into the classrooms. We've got schools that are unsafe, so we're gonna improve the, the school safety technology. I'd, I'd like to create a public-private fund to help reward teachers that are successful in improving student performance. But, at the end of the day, what we really want to do is try to create a school system that provides an education that, that allows our children to have or uh, be ready for real world jobs rather than just another standardized test. Thank you. Mr. Felger? Well, under the current system, there's nothing America can do about the educational system. We all must understand this. This is a county school system. Now, if we were to switch to a city school system, then the mayor would have more leeway as to what he can do and what concerns or what action he can take as far as his input on the city school system or the school system at all. I've heard some people say, raise the property tax and help fund the school. If you're gonna help fund it, why not take it over? To me, the teachers should be the ones in the fund because they're the ones that are dealing with our kids. So if we switch it to a city school system, I was looking at some numbers as to that falls in line with the occupational tax. If you bring that in, you can give a certain amount of that money to the teachers. You can help fund the teachers through the occupational tax. That's another issue that people are not addressing. People are driving into the city, not paying taxes. We live in the city, we're going to up the taxes on us. And people are reaping the, reaping the benefits of coming in and out and not doing their part. So I would rather change it to a city school system. That way we can have more say as to what we do. The curriculum will change because in Alabama, out of the top 10 schools, only one is a county school, and that's Lampa. We all understand what Lampa is. Out of the top 25 schools, only six are county schools. So the city school system pretty much is the best system that we have right now in the state. So to me right now, again, under this current system, there is nothing that the mayor can do in Montgomery in a county school system. Switch the system, then we can do we can do better. We can do more for the teachers. Thank you. In, in the first nine days, we will convene uh, an education revenue committee, and that will give us uh, the recommendation for what we need to do to invest in our public schools and how to uh, improve the revenue for those public schools. I don't believe that we need a city school system. I'm very candid about that. I don't believe in the fact that mayor can't do um, something just because we don't have direct control of them. Number of entities which the city funds right now that the mayor does not have any control over. So what we choose to earmark and what we choose to invest in is up to us. And that's based on our priorities. So whether or not that is the Chamber of Commerce, which the city underwrites to a certain degree, whether or not that's the Shakespeare Festival, which the city underwrites to a certain degree, or any other entity. We can invest in whatever the city council and the mayor agree to invest in. So the first 90 days, 
I'll bring together a task force, some of which I've already identified. Uh, Dr. Kayvon Durabi, who supported my campaign, former economics uh, chair at Auburn University of Montgomery, but also uh, Lauren Will, former chairman of the uh, Huntington College, as well as principals, uh, former school board members, and university deans and presidents in this city right now who are very interested in participating and being a part of the education solution. Once we do that, we will talk with our businessmen and businesswomen around the table about how do we get the money necessary for the, the types of reforms that we want. And after that, those 90 days, we will present that to the city council, we'll present that to the people of Montgomery, Alabama, so we can move forward with the ideas. And if there's any legislative action that needs to be taken, we will bring that forward at that time. Thank you. Thank you. I've heard uh, us talk about uh, education and what we would do as a mayor, and I agree with uh, Candidate Felder. The mayor can't do anything about uh, education, these schools, uh, but what we're doing now. Uh, I was nicknamed the uh, Education Commission because of the thing that we've done the education on the county commission. I was the one that raised my hand to start the pity sales tax that generates $28 million for the school system. It has generated about $600 million since 2005. Have a lower tax, they don't have enough. The problem with the school is the money. One of the problems also we have with schools is that people at the school boards have thought that the mayor and the other bureaucracy uh, have uh, interfered with the board, the superintendent, for many, many years, the chain and everybody. So, we, you, the mayor will be crossing the line. The school system has a, a, a nominated board uh, of, of seven people that's supposed to manage that board along with the superintendent. So the first 90 days, I would not spend my time as mayor uh, dealing with the education because we don't have anything to do with, uh, with the education uh, as the mayor among them, not the city council. Now what we can do, what we've been doing as the mayor, and the city council and the county commission is a sister school and building school. We built Carver, we built Bellingham, we built Park Blossom, we, uh, uh, the mall uh, has ramp and impact, and we're looking at a new BTW now. So those are the things that the mayor, the city council, and the county commission can do. But the Board of Education, the Montgomery Public School Board of Education, is the one that's in, in control of the uh, school system here in Montgomery, Alabama. Folks, this is a very important question because there is a difference between some of us on this stage on this issue. I agree that leaders lead and every great transformative executive I've ever seen at every level rewrites his or her job description. So Stephen, I agree with you that the right mayor with the right vision can plant himself firmly in the middle of this conversation and can galvanize this community and move it to demand excellence in education and I will be that kind of mayor. But here's a place where we differ. Folks, all you have to count on for the next three, two months from us between now and the runoff is our word. And you have to know you can value it. The worst thing that we can do as candidates is to promise something that we know we cannot deliver. You don't have to tell me teachers need more money. I was raised by a teacher, and one day we could not go to school because we could not afford gas money. I don't need to be educated by anybody on how little money teachers make. I know. But I'm not going to stand here and suggest to you that the mayor of Montgomery can raise teachers' pay. And here's the problem. When I hear people calling into talk radio and saying, why are these candidates for mayor talking about education? There's nothing they can do about education. You got them running ads saying they'll raise teachers' pay. What is happening when you have promises you cannot deliver is it poisons the climate for reform and it poisons the climate that one of us is going to need to galvanize this community around education. So let's be straight with the people. No mayor of this city can raise teachers' pay. Well, what a mayor can do, and I'm gonna drive this point home, there is no bigger pulpit in the city of Montgomery in the mayor's office 
I will push the city to demand excellence because I close with this. When I ride by schools in Montgomery and I see MPS moving forward with accreditation as if we're patting ourselves on the back for having a lifeline, that's like a surgeon saying, I didn't kill anybody this week, I want a glass of champagne. We have to raise our standards of excellence, and I promise you, I will push for that as mayor. I will push for more accountability. I will be a champion of reform, but I will not make you promises I know a mayor cannot keep. Okay, Mr. Reed. Thank you, being very clear about this. If you want can do, you know, can do candidate, then that's me. If you want can't do mayors, then you have office to choose from. Let me be very clear about this. The probate judge in Montgomery in Mobile, Mobile County initiated a cigarette tax that brings $3 million into Mobile County specifically for, for mental health, for mental health support. Now, statutorily, the probate judge can't do that. So what people will tell you is what the mayor can and cannot do. What I will tell you is if you want to go by the statute, there's a lot of things that we cannot do statutorily. But it's about the initiative and it's about the passion that you have for that topic. When I talk about raising teacher pay, I wouldn't say that if I don't believe it. Now, R2, on the other hand, may say things he doesn't believe. He switched parties about three times. He's run for about four or five different offices in, in three different states. Excuse me, two. I mean, I want to make sure I'm correct on that. But let me be very clear about this. When I talk about raising teacher pay, that is directly what the mayor can do if he or she seeks to do it. You can earmark those funds, you can raise those funds, you can work with the school board, no different than the mayor has been involved in the intervention that is currently happening today and would not have happened without the mayor's involvement in that. So don't tell me what the mayor can and cannot do. It's about who you elect as mayor that will determine what that mayor does in this city. Well now you can make personal attacks, but I'm gonna keep it on the high plane. Because here's what I know. You can have all the passion you want to have, but I repeat, a mayor cannot raise teachers' pay unless you have a city school system. Now, if you were going to do what Mr. Felder is doing, and you were going to say, yes, I'm going to commit the prestige of my office to pushing for a city school system so I can push for higher pay or whatever values I want, I would say, I don't think you can pull it off, but I would say I respect the difference. So one of the things I want y'all to watch for in this next month, it's one thing when we disagree about issues, we ought to do it. But when a guy makes a personal attack when his views are questioned, that may mean he's not confident in his views. I think to your question about what would I do in the first 90 days, I think one of the major things that I would do is reaffirm a commitment to ensure that all of our kids in the city get a quality education. You know, being having a mother in law that was a long time educator in MPS, and my wife and I were both educated in MPS, graduated from Jeff Davis, and having a personal interest in having three young kids, that reforming education in the city is a personal interest. In. Now, what I want to do in the first 90 days is I want to go ahead and enroll the city in the Imagination Library. This is a nonprofit started by Dolly Parton, which will give every child born in the city of Montgomery a free book every month from birth to age five. Because I believe that kids will learn how to read earlier and have, a, have appreciation for reading will be much better suited. Also, I'm going to sit and we're going to meet with the school board. And not only with the school board, we're going to bring in the business community. And we're also going to bring in some of our uh, nonprofits. And we're going to begin to discuss ways to improving education. Because one of the things that I've talked about as I've gone around the city is that what is our commitment to education here in the city? Now, there's been a lot of talk saying what the mayor's role is and isn't education, but the mayor has the largest pulpit here in the city. And, and we have a seat at the table because the city of Montgomery has dollars invested in the schools, as Chairman Dean has gone and told us, that it was us that put up half the money to go ahead and build a new lamp and a new M10. And so what you're going to have under a love administration is a renewed commitment to excellence and setting, up, and setting a standard and letting people know that the city is going to do our part to making sure that all our kids have an opportunity to learn. Thank you. I think my moderator is suggesting that we save rebuttals so everyone is having to speak. Okay, just to clarify. 
So moving into our second question, we understand that education is a very spirited conversation because we're talking about children and we're talking about their education and it is the pivotal conversation for, them grow, for their growth and development and for how we prepare them for the world. So my next question has to do with, um, it has to do with our, our um, magnet schools here in the city. So there is a lot of conversation about the excellence of certain magnet schools and the marginalization of certain public schools. So could you speak for a moment on the marginalization of our failing schools in comparison to our high achieving magnet schools? I'll start with you, Mr. Hunt. Well, I have the opportunity to be a product of, of the magnet schools I attended Baldwin for, for junior high. I believe the, the main thing that we have to do in all of our schools is believe that our kids are able to learn. And I think one of the things we can do to try to improve what we have in our failing schools is bring back the, 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 the gifted programs like Quest. Because there are some successes, there are smart kids that are in our traditional schools. And we're not going to do it by just leaving those and those that are dealing with some behavioral problems that are going on in the regular classrooms. I think we also, when we're talking about improving education here in the city, we also have to look at some of the things that are going on in the classroom. And I've talked to teachers and I've talked to parents. Um, we have a lot of kids that are coming from very tough situations at home and can bring that into the, into the classroom. I talked to a teacher and told me that she had a student that had a, watched a family member get murdered. And then the family sent that child back to school the next day. So there is a need in our schools for mental health services to go ahead and help our children cope with some of the things they're dealing with in their, in their daily lives. And I also think that before our kids can learn, they also have to feel safe. So we have to do more to instill conflict resolution. And also acknowledge in the city we have a gang problem. And work on public safety perspective to deal with it, the community centers, but also cracking down on the leaders that are involved in doing it. Thank you, Mr. Davis. I support the Magnet Program for a very simple, pragmatic, self-interested reason. If we did not have the Magnet Program, we wouldn't have any upper income black folks or white folks left in the Montgomery public school system. That's the reality. The magnet program is the one anchor in this system that is keeping some thin measure of income and race diversity there. I want to use this question to make a larger point. It distresses me, and all of us meet with business leaders as we go around raising money. It distresses me when I hear significant leaders in this community say, Oh, we just want to make sure that the kids coming out of MPS can go work at Hyundai. And we just want to make sure they can get those $18 an hour jobs. Folks, when J.C. Love, Artur Davis, Elton Dean, Stephen Reed, and the Torres Felder went to Montgomery Public Schools, that was not the standard. Nobody looked at the four or five of us and said, oh, as long as you can become a wonderful assembly line worker, we're happy. What was said to us was, we're gonna build a system that will reward whatever you can be. Lawyer, future probate judge, future congressman, future prosecutor, leader in the correction system. It is demeaning to our children to say that the only thing MPS ought to be is a factory for folks to do assembly work in this community. I want to get to a point where a child in any school in this system can excel and can achieve. I think that's what this is about. Can we get to a point where you can go to any school and reach your highest level of attainment? We are aiming our standards too low in the system. Mr. Dean, please. I have 17 schools. Uh, in my kind of, just kind of I have more than any commissioner on the commission. And when I when I visit these schools, I probably visit them about ten times a year. I see that they're lacking. It, it's just amazing that uh, we don't see what these schools need. They need money. You know, we got the present people in, uh, in the hierarchy in Montgomery. They want to put a band-aid on Well, the schools are bleeding. Yeah. 
They are in, in, in the interdiction, they are. But what about the good things that are going on at, at, at the near Harvard, uh, J.D., Lee? People talk about magic schools. Uh, I see Ms. Rams out there, great yellow jacket. I'm a Wolverine. So it's not about the magic. When I recruit these jobs, when I run around the table recruiting these jobs, they don't ask whether they finish magic school, public school, private school, home school, uh, charter school. They ask do we have an educated workforce. And that's what we are doing now, we're trying to make sure we have an educated workforce. Yes, we got some kids that come from homes that uh, they don't eat, they don't have clothes. There's a lot of things going on. And, and our tour and Stephen and, and the rest of the game, when we were in school, we had teachers that really loved us. The principals care. And what is going on now? You've got to make sure you've got the principal that's at the top that looks after his teachers, the teacher looks after the students. That is not going on. So what I would do is make sure that we, I can help foster change as mayor to make sure we have the right principals, first of all, the right superintendent, the right board members, the right teachers and all of that. Because, but we got to make sure that we can have the money to support these schools. I grown got 25 bills. Montgomery County got 10, we the capital city. We can't do anything with 10 million. Look at the Hoover, look at Mobile. And we scared to take chances like Steve said, we scared to step out. Mobile, they threatened to take away cheerleaders, band, and all of that. We get money raised for the Avalon. We haven't done those things yet. Thing, when you talk about things like that, people say, well, I got an election uh, this, this year. We got we got politicians that are scared to make decisions because they're scared they might not get elected. I'm not afraid to make those. I am a change agent. Mr. Reed, please. Dr. Thompson, will you please repeat the question? Sure, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so there has been a, um, a lot of conversation about the disparity between what our public schools are succeeding in and what our magnet schools are excelling in. So can you please address the disparity in the public school versus the magnet school? Well, you know, the mayor can't do anything about what happens in public schools. At least that's what's been said, I think. <laughs> so, given that we will acknowledge the mayor can't have some impact in some decisions, but maybe not other, depending on where you stand on that particular issue, then I would certainly say, as it relates to the disparity between our schools, we have to do the second part of what I talked about when we discuss our opportunity to learn. And that is we have to invest and universal pre-K, high quality pre-K starting long before a child gets to kindergarten. That's something that, that we can do here. That's something that we discussed. I discussed that with, with Chairman Dean some years ago. We discussed that with other legislative leaders. We have to invest in high quality universal pre-K and fund it. We have to fund it. But we also have to invest in our schools themselves and not get into an either or scenario. Why not both and? That's the genius of the end. It doesn't have to be magnet schools or traditional schools. Many communities around this country have had magnet schools and traditional schools long before Montgomery ever had them. When all of us were going to just this high school we were zoned for or another high school. But what we have to decide in this community is if all of education is going to be a priority. And if it is a priority, then we won't allow any statute, any silos of control, or any ideas to stop us from progressing in the areas of education. Whether you go to Fuse, whether you go to Davis, whether you go to Dalrada, or you go to Bear, Baldwin, Lamp, or Carver, we have to make sure that our students, our teachers, our support staff, and our parents have the necessary resources and services they have to provide a quality education. Because one of the things we miss when we discuss schools is we miss parental involvement. And oftentimes, the blame gets put on the parent. But we don't factor in some of those parents are working two or three jobs. Some of those parents may not come from homes where they have an appreciation for edu education. So we have to include wraparound services in this equation that we have to make sure that we are willing to put all the political capital aside, we're willing to put all of the span of control aside of who does what statutorily, 
to invest in our schools and our students and our teachers and parents and community, and we don't just expect them to have it without putting anything behind to support them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Felder, please. Status and environment. Most parents at magnet schools, mainly the one that we all know, you, you have hand-picked students for particular schools. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna pick the best of the best, then of course you're gonna stand out from the rest. If your child is growing up in an environment, again, if it's, if it's violence, every night again, you have a diamond in the row. I went to school, I know growing up in Gear Village, I don't know any of my friends that went to magnet schools, but when I moved to Sunshine Neighbors, then I started meeting different friends, and some of those were in magnet schools. So that's the part that I see with the environments that you grew up in. Like Mr. Reed was saying, the parents at home, you may not push your child as far as you would if it was a in, a, in a different environment. So if you have kids that are, parents are in a particular job force, and they're coming in from a different country, and they want their kids to be at a separate location so they can excel intellectually, then it's gonna be money and power behind that move. But when you have kids growing up in an environment where you're probably on section eight, you're working two or three jobs, you really don't have the time to push your kid like someone else does who's probably working eight hour job and you come home and be on your child, or the husband works and the parent is at home. So the difference is the environment again and status. Every, every school, regardless of whether it's a magnet school or a traditional public school, deserve more. They need more resources. They need more school safety. They need more support for the teachers. What I want to do is challenge everyone to try to get involved in public education. We need businesses, we need elected officials, we need parents, we need non-parents to get involved in this. We all have a stake in this. And just to try to identify as one person or one group to, that will be the, the end all is probably not going to happen. It's our responsibility to try to improve our schools. And if we do that, we'll give these children a better opportunity for life. And I believe that we do need to put a lot of effort into birth through kindergarten, because that's when your brain's forming, your, um, learn, you're learning to, when you're taught to read at an early age, you're, uh, you learn quicker and your reading skills will improve. If you don't learn to read till you're six, seven, or eight, it takes a lot longer to learn to read. So any investment we make pre-kindergarten <coughs> is a good investment. What we have in our system today, we have a couple things. We have children coming up to, in the kindergarten that don't read. And we have teachers that are expected to do, not only teach, but also spend a lot of time working with children with, on issues that they shouldn't be dealing with. So the demands on teachers are tremendous. And I think if we, if we work with children before they get to kindergarten, I think the teachers will be more effective in providing the quality education that the Montgomery school systems used to provide. Thank you. I have been warned that we are out of time as to education, but I would encourage the candidates, if you have an opportunity to speak with the guests that are here um, at a later time or even a question and answer series that has to do with education, this is a topic that we have to be concerned with in our community. And I think that a few segments of it has only been tapped into. I think there are layers, and we just started unpacking. So Ms. Keith, we'll turn it back over to you. 